Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to day two of our Istanbul trip. Today we are going to a place called Fati and it is a mosque where they bring over items of clothing and a shoe print and a lock of the Prophet's peace be upon him's beard. It is said to be his belongings. That is normally in a museum here in Istanbul, but during Ramadan, they take it over to this mosque for you to see. I am just absolutely obsessed with this view. Look at the lovely masjids. It's just so, so stunning. We've still got another eight minutes walking until we arrive in Shatala, but on the way we are going to the bazaar because that is on the way. So I don't think we're too far from that, are we? No, it's quite close to it. And it's like Arabic shops? Yeah, it's like full of Arab people and Arab shops. Okay, so that's what we're doing and then we're heading to the mosque in Shatala. Mashallah, that is the mosque just there from the outside. It's absolutely stunning, like all the other mosques here in Turkey. And right there is where the bazaar is. There's big, long, massive streets where you can buy lots of clothes and food and everything just smells so, so amazing. Lots of jewellery and Arabic shops and it was really, really beautiful. The architecture of all the mosques are so similar and every single one is just beautiful. I love it here, I really do. It's just so nice to be in a country where most people are dressing modestly and wearing the hijab and there's just so many stunning mosques to go and pray inside and it's just so, so nice. I feel like living in the UK sometimes it can feel a little bit lonely when when you're a Muslim, especially a woman, and people are kind of giving you funny looks for wearing the hijab, and you're always kind of the odd one out. And there's always that worry as well, where somebody could be really nasty towards you. I've heard of a lot of hate crimes and things in the UK towards hijabi women, which is a really, really sad thing. So to be here is just so, so beautiful. I would definitely advise any of you thinking about coming to Istanbul, definitely do it. It's really, really lovely. We just caught up with Asr prayer in that stunning mosque. And Hamza actually got confused. This isn't the mosque where they have the Prophet peace be upon him's items of clothing. It's actually, he asked a security guard. It is a 20 minute walk from here. So no problem, because we managed to catch up with our prayer anyway. So that's where we're going to go to just now. 
So we found the right mosque and it's absolutely stunning. You can just see it. Look at there, the dome, and then there's people praying down there. And I think this is the door normally that you would go through to see the Prophet, peace be upon him's belongings. And it does seem to be shut, which is a real shame. To be honest with you, it's 10 past six at night, so it's not really surprising that it's closed. I don't know why we left it so late to come. But there is a museum here. I think it's quite far away, but it is in Istanbul. And you can then go and see his belongings or his said to be belongings there. And they're the things that they take here during Ramadan, some of them. So inshallah tomorrow, we will leave a little bit earlier and that is where we will go to because I do think that would be something really interesting to see even if it's not something that is authentic I'm here anyway and I would still like to just see it for myself Allahu alam, who really knows if it is his but still I think it would be something that would be interesting to see inshallah we have just over one hour now until iftar alhamdulillah so we are now gonna walk back or maybe Hamza will be feeling nice and he'll get me a taxi because I'm feeling very tired and we're gonna go back to the tent where we got our iftar last night it was so so nice there there was so many people though and we weren't able to sit indoors so we did have outside but it was just so so nice to be with so many other people having iftar so inshallah it would be really nice to be able to have our iftar and sit down with the brothers and sisters in the tent this here is said to be the prophet peace be upon him's top that he wore So we found out from some people in there that it's open between 10 and 5 so we actually missed it by one hour. So we are planning to come back tomorrow inshallah maybe around lunchtime and hopefully we'll be able to go inside then. <laughs> traffic traffic. Uh, traffic. This is the tent here where you can get the iftar and that's where we sat down there in front of that mosque over there. The queue is going all the way round the back, round the side, all the way down here. So I think maybe we've left it a little bit too late again to get a seat inside. Iftar should be in around 25 minutes, so we're gonna go and wait in the queue now and just hope that we can go and sit inside. A lot of the people just take the food and then go away, they don't actually sit inside, so hopefully we've made it in time. The queue is absolutely crazy, so that is the part there where you get the food. And the queue goes all the way down there, all the way around the chain, and then kind of swivels back and then comes up the way. So I think it's at least an hour's wait. We've started to move down the queue a bit, but you can still see it goes all the way down there. We are getting closer. We just need to go around there and then down the side of the tent to the other end. The Dan has just gone off, so we can now break our fast. And Alhamdulillah, another day complete of Ramadan. May all our fast be accepted. I mean. So unfortunately, after all that queuing, they said the main meal was finished, but they handed us a bag, and I'm not too sure what's in it. So let's open it. A date, bread. Oh, that looks like a sandwich, that's nice. Boss of water. Oh, a little juice. And... Oh, nice. Best cake as well. I absolutely love this one. I can't remember what it's called. But that's so nice, alhamdulillah. In the sandwich, it's got cheese, tomato and lettuce. Inna Allah al-Rahman al-Rahim. Allah yaalam ma tusibun wa ma tuhlinun. Wal-ladina tadhoon wal.
الذين يدعون من دون الله لا يخلقون شيئا وهم يخلقون أموات غير أحياء وما يشعرون أيان يبعثون إلهكم إله واحد فالذين لا يؤمنون Isha and then we stayed for Tarhawi prayer last night. It was really nice to try it in a different country. The only place I have prayed Tarhawi prayer is in Scotland so the way that it's done in Turkey is a little bit different but I really enjoyed it and there were some lovely sisters there. It was a lot quicker. Normally in the UK it takes around an hour and a half to finish the whole Tarhawi prayer but last night it took us under an hour. I would say it was about 40 to 50 minutes, that's how long it took us to do the whole prayer, which was a lot quicker than what I'm used to, but it was really nice to try it in a different country. And there was a lovely sister that sat next to me and she laid her scarf out on the floor so my head wasn't actually fully touching on the carpet. So that was really, really lovely of her. Now today we're heading back to the mosque that we were at yesterday and we're hoping to see the Prophet, peace be upon him, clothing items. It is now 10 to 2 in the afternoon so I think it takes around 40 minutes to walk there and it should be open till 5 so inshallah today we'll be able to see it. This bread absolutely smells incredible. As we're walking along just come across this really stunning view of Istanbul. Absolutely gorgeous and it's such a sunny day today. I really wish I had my sunglasses. It's absolutely beautiful. I found during the day it's lovely and warm. I would still maybe wear a hoodie but it is lovely and warm and then as soon as Maghreb calls it is freezing cold, icy cold. I'll have my big jacket on and I will still be feeling really cold. Oh God. Thank you. We have just arrived and there is honestly a massive queue so it starts all the way down there and it goes all the way up the hill up there and that is just for the women. Hamza has walked to the other side to join the men's queue so I'm just going to go over here. This queue is reminding me of the queue last night for Iftar. There's so many people here. The queue is starting to go down a bit. I am at the corner now. And then there's so many people behind. Very, very big town out. We've got a wee bag to put our shoes in. with you guys I actually found it really disappointing so we queued for well the girls queue was a lot longer than the men so I queued for around an hour and a half and you're literally just rushed in you're all packed in together people are pushing and shoving to get past each other and skipping the queue and then you get in there for about 10 seconds and it was literally finished before I knew it there was just one t-shirt there there was no lock of his beard or anything like that so I don't know I was expecting to see a lot more than what I did I did manage to take a little video let me know in the comments if you think that that really is the top of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him 
or do you think that is something that's been made up? I think maybe you could say shirk. I'm not too sure. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. Now we are heading to Aya Sofia. We have ordered another taxi. Normally we do like to walk, but we feel like we're running out of time. We want to fit everything in before iftar because this is our last full day here in Istanbul. And inshallah, before I leave, I need to try the Turkish tea because I keep seeing it and every night I think, right, I'm gonna try it, but I haven't. So I need to do that before I leave. And also I need to get two fridge magnets. I need to get one for my mom as well. You all know how much my mom loves fridge magnets. Okay. Thank you. We're just on the way now to the Hagia Sophia. It was built as a mosque in the beginning. However, it then turned into a museum and the latest president of Turkey has now converted it back into a mosque. There is the first glimpse of the Hagia Sophia. It's absolutely stunning, mashallah. Looks like there's a protest over here for Palestine. I did see them actually when we were getting on the taxi to go to the mosque. I did see a lot of people with the Palestinian flags. It's a real shame because the people working here are really not nice at all. A woman just started getting really angry towards me telling me that I had to get out and that I wasn't allowed to go up there and she says no women, no women but there's lots of women there and I said to her but what about all the women up there and she goes no, no, no and starts shouting at me and I says calm down it's Ramadan you know this is a peaceful month please calm down and then she comes up to me starts grabbing my arm go, go, go so rude honestly you can see her just over there I tried telling her as well because I thought she thought, oh, it's because you're non-Muslim. I says, I am Muslim. She goes, I don't care. Everybody here is a Muslim. Everybody here is a Muslim. And I just thought she thought maybe I was a tourist. I don't know why people like that work inside a mosque. Honestly, if you're going to have that, if you're going to be so nasty like that, there's honestly, there's no point in being like that in the house of God. It's, it's ridiculous. They had such a bad attitude in that mosque. They really put a damper on my time in there. And they need to be really careful, especially that woman. She needs to be careful because a lot of non-Muslims are going visiting that mosque. And the, this is their first impression of Islam when they see somebody that's being rude and being angry and shouting in a mosque. It's really, really not a good environment and it's not good for people that are potentially looking into becoming Muslim. For me, when I was in Indonesia, I visited the Istiqlal Mosque in Jakarta and I've spoken about this mosque many, many times. That was one of the main turning points for me in my journey to becoming Muslim. The main reason was the way that I was treated there. I was non-Muslim at the time and they treated me with so much respect. They were so, so kind, gave me lots of information and were so, so welcoming. And that is what you need to be when you work in a mosque and you're with the general public and when you're around people that could potentially be looking into Islam. It wasn't only just me as well. They were shouting at Hamza and kind of like pushing us and telling us just to go. And at one point she just told me just to leave. It was the main mosque that I was looking forward to going in and visiting and it my time there was just completely ruined to be honest with you, which is a real, real shame. <laughs> We've arrived two hours before the iftar today because we wanted to try and get a seat inside. And there's already a mass of queue goes all the way down there and round. But it starts in there, it doesn't go around the side of the tent. So inshallah today we're able to sit inside. I just cannot be doing with queues. Honestly, it's as soon as I have to stand, my legs just get so sore, my back is in agony. So I am sitting here on this little wall while Hamza stood over there <laughs> waiting for us in the queue. Alhamdulillah, today we made it inside the tent. So 
I'm not too sure what this is. It looks like some sort of pasta it's a, sauce. It's a, it's a soup. Is it soup? Yeah, it's a soup. Soup pasta. And do you know what that is? Uh, no idea. Well, I'm, so, I'm sure we'll soon find out. And then bread. And then a lovely little cake. I think that was on one of the first nights. And then a yogurt and a water. And there's plenty of seats in here. Loads and loads of rows of tables. It looks really, really nice in here, and it's nice what they're doing during the month of Ramadan. Arabic zor. Dil. Arabic zor. Ah, We've got about 30 minutes now to the call to prayer, and you can see that the hall is getting very, very busy. There's just a few seats left, and there's people still coming in. They have lights above each of the mosques. I put this one into Google Translate and it says, don't forget your afterlife. We finished our wee prayer again tonight and now we're just walking back and I got a couple of fridge magnets. I just got the same one for mum and for me. It's got a little tram on it and then it's got some of the nice mosques there. So I think mum will be happy with that. Now we're looking for some Turkish tea just to sit down and relax. We have stopped off at a little cafe and I finally got my Turkish tea. There we go, and a cute little glass. And then also went for this dessert, it's called a banana puff. I'm not too sure what it is, but it looks really good. It tastes really similar to UK tea actually, it's just got a little bit of a stronger taste to it I think. Sadly that is our last day in Istanbul, come to an end. Tomorrow we are heading to the airport and leaving this beautiful city. It's been such a fun time being here, I've really enjoyed everything that we've done. We've seen so many beautiful places and I would highly highly recommend coming if you are interested in going to Istanbul. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next video inshallah. Bye. Bye-bye.